please welcome Rosebud Baker. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks. Oh, my God. I'm from New York, uh, but I, I feel like I belong in L.A. because uh, I'm a very spiritual person because I come from money. <laughs> so I can afford to be delusional. Um, no, I don't have it anymore. Uh, I don't. I made a lot of mistakes to get into comedy. Um, truly. Uh, I did. I, my, growing up, my grandfather was uh, Secretary of State under George Bush Sr., yeah, so it could have been in the Illuminati. And, uh, instead, I became a jester for bachelorette parties. So, I fucked up. I really did. I'm a liberal, uh, just so you guys feel safe. Um, <laughs> I am, but like, I feel like a hypocrite with that background, being a liberal, you know? Because my sisters will be online and they're like, if you don't vote, you're being complicit. And I'm like, yeah, that's true, but uh, Saudi oil money put us through college. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, you are complicit. <laughs> my sister goes on Instagram, she's like, Obama's my dad. I'm like, our family ruined the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, but I do, I just feel like the more political you get, like the more extreme you get in your politics, the more hypocritical you become now. Like, uh, look at David Duke. <laughs> I'm just saying, he's it's the most extreme example, but he's the grand wizard of the KKK. And I just feel like for somebody who hates homosexuals, grand wizard is like the gayest job title <laughs> I've ever heard. He's on TV like, I don't like homosexuals. It's like, well, you're wearing a cape, Liberace. You want the gays to go away, you're not gonna do it in a costume. It's not gonna work. I'm just glad we're having these conversations in this country, you know? And they're not easy conversations to have. Like, I was talking to my friend, she's Puerto Rican. She was like, Rosie, white women have gotta stop wearing hoop earrings. You guys are appropriating Latin culture. And I was like, all right, cool, I get it, you know? Like, your people came up with this shit. Um, but if you want me to get my own identity, uh, my people came up with appropriation. <laughs> <laughs> like, technically, I'm very in touch with my background. <laughs> it's like, I will see your hoop earrings and I'll take them. <laughs> That's what we do. It's just hard to tell a white person to get their own identity. It's like telling a homeless person to get a job. It's like, where? <laughs> Should I just look at this trail of shit I've left behind me, see if I can make some connections back there? <laughs> I am really glad though. Like, I'm glad we're still talking about gender equality, you know, because I, I know that women aren't equal to men yet because they still give us rape whistles. <laughs> have to be like, let the games begin! <laughs> Seems like a weird weapon. <laughs> I mean, if you see somebody drowning and you throw that person a whistle, you want that person to die. That is clearly something that a dude came up with. Because the whole reason rape whistles were invented is because yelling rape wasn't working. So some guy was like, I don't know, trick people into thinking there's a football game going on. Stop bumming us out. Which is ironic, because the last people you want showing up to help at a rape is a team full of college athletes. <laughs> I'm just saying, you're getting attacked in a parking lot. You don't want to hear hike, hike. You're like, shit, this just got worse. Anyway, you guys, uh, well, here's, my real point is just like, the only thing more demeaning than getting raped is getting raped while you're blowing a whistle. <laughs> now I'm just the world's saddest tea kettle. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm Rosebud Baker, thanks. <laughs>